What would you tell someone who tells you, Rabbi, as much as I'd like to believe, you know that from the X-Files, I want to believe, um, I wasn't born with faith. So I, I actually think that faith is, is not fixed. It's fluid. I think that not everyone who was born or raised with faith maintains their faith, and not everyone who wasn't born with faith or in a faith background cannot attain faith. Uh, it's very interesting, the Hebrew word for faith itself is emunah, which etymologically is connected to a word for craftsman. No one is born a craftsman. You work at it. You get better at it every single day. I find it fascinating that the word Jewish people use to describe a religious person is not, as is the case in other traditions, a good Jew, or a good, you know, have a good Christian, a good Muslim, but a practicing Jew. We're all practicing. We're getting better each and every day. It's like a muscle. When you exercise it, you maintain it, you strengthen it. And if you don't, it atrophies, it weakens. Just like the body needs constant nourishment and love and care, so to the soul. And what is a spiritual diet? How do you feed the soul? Through genuine acts of prayer, through rigorous study, and through selfless acts of kindness. It's as simple as that. The more you do those, the stronger your soul. The less attention you give to your soul, the weaker it gets, so to speak. I just want to conclude with a very powerful story the Rebbe was once asked by somebody, how do I become your chassid? What does it take? And the Rebbe said, I am happy to consider a chassid anybody who wakes up each day and says, how can I be better today than I was yesterday and tomorrow better still? I think that's how we grow spiritually, by strengthening our faith through acts of prayer, study, and kindness each and every day. That creates a spiritual diet and a strong soul. I think Rabbi Kaplan has something to add. The uh, belief, emuna, is congenital to the spiritual soul that we have. Everybody has belief. There's no such thing as a person without belief. There's a person who doesn't consciously experience his belief. And we see that often, people who claim they don't believe, and some event happens, a foxhole, whatever you want, and they believe. Where did it come from? It came from inside of them, which means they always had it. But you need to work on it in order to develop it and feel it in your conscious life. Um, someone, I just want to add this. Someone once explained it to me, my, my local Chabad rabbi, once explained it to me in a, actually a JLI class that, that our souls, it's like each one of us is actually hardwired to God. And sometimes there's static on the line. But the work that we do is to clear the static so the, the line is wide open and moving in both directions. I thought that was a really helpful um, image. If I could just add. That. Sure. I was actually talking about like ex express expressing one's inner faith, and it's very important that Rabbi Kaplan added. There is no doubt. The Rebbe spoke at great length about this principle of an intrinsic inherited faith each and every one of us has. Um, there's an interesting story that I included actually in a recent book um, about the Rebbe where someone came to the Rebbe and he said to the Rebbe, I'm thinking of not going to synagogue on Yom Kippur because I feel very hypocritical. I, we all hear this as rabbis very often. I feel like a hypocrite. I'm not there every other day of the year. Why should I show up on Yom Kippur? It's not the real me. And the Rebbe said something, I think, very powerful. The Rebbe said, because the natural indigenous place for a Jew is in an environment of faith and the synagogue connecting to Hashem, you're not a hypocrite on Yom Kippur when you show up. You're a hypocrite every other day of the year when you don't. <laughs> exactly. That's so great. Well, um, sure. Please, Rabbi Friedman. Sure. To believe means you are sure that something is true whether you believe it or not. Huh. We've, we've, we've made faith into the determining factor. If I believe in God, then he's real. If I don't believe in him, he's not. No. God is real whether you believe in him or not. So don't worry about your belief. Just do what he says. <laughs> what, what do you know for sure is real whether you believe it or not? There's got to be something. Otherwise, you have no, you have no anchor. That, that something is God. Go ahead, Rabbi Kalmanson. Uh, one more. Obviously, this triggered something in the rabbis. <laughs> but... Um, there's, a different, there's another very important point, which is that where does a person struggling with faith find themselves? By struggling with revealed or expressed faith. There was a musicologist from Columbia University named, I think his name was Kalman Cowell. 
Um, that's how I read the story, at least. And he came to see the Rebbe once, and uh, he said, I just want to make a disclaimer before we continue. I don't want to be on the false pretenses. I'm not sure I believe in God. The Rebbe said, are you struggling with it? He said, I am. The Rebbe said, that's fine. That's okay. Now we have something to work with. So the struggler also has a very real place. And to the Rebbe, the struggle itself demonstrated a very real and a deep connection. The same thing with Elie Wiesel after the Holocaust when he expressed himself in certain ways. The Rebbe said the very question with such urgency and passion coming from your heart expressed to the world through the media is a demonstration that you believe there's someone to challenge, someone to take to task. Mm -hmm. So if a person today doesn't yet find themselves in the camp, if you will, that has boxed itself into believers, but you're struggling and you're dealing with it, you're working it through, you're already engaged in a very real and a very healthy relationship with Hashem. If you liked that video, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below for hours of the best Jewish content online.